Hello, hello, hello. My name is Amnesia, and I'm so excited because I just got a new job. Uh, by the time this episode airs, I will have had, I will have started at that new job. Um, and I've also we've been on a winning streak, so can't beat that. You know, winning streaks are good. Yesterday, played some Hearthstone, and just completely stomped that ranked game. It was insane. So today we're gonna play a new game. We're gonna play another game, and that game's gonna be called StarCraft II. Let me go ahead up here and uh, play some StarCraft. Uh, as I said, recently I've been having some pretty good luck with StarCraft as well. I uh, won a got out of the. Uh, I won my first match in the group stages of this uh, tournament. It's ongoing. And that's pretty exciting. It was super thrilling. You know, I finally felt like I was back in the groove of things. Just feeling a little bit more, a uh, little bit more like my old self. Not quite up to. I wasn't able to macro as well behind my micro, but at least there was some semblance of macro going on. I was able to expand. Um, so I felt a little bit more like I used to play, and that's cool. I appreciate that of myself playing like that. But it got really exciting, you know, it came down to some really big disruptor hits and all that stuff, because it was PvP, and disruptor balls flying all over the place, it was nuts. Gonna be playing a PvT against Roma 3 Legend. And on New Gettysburg, Terran love this map. Beakuaz has some cool uh, tech paths for them. It's really friendly to airplay, and you know how Terran feel about air shenanigans. So I'm going to put this pile on here. It's not really any way to wall off against Reapers in this map that I've come up with. So. Just gonna do our best there. Whoops, I forgot that there, because I'm too busy. Too busy flapping my gums. We're gonna go scout him. Hopefully, he didn't do any proxies, because the scout is also late. Um, and we can get that gateway up now. Now, this at least helps a little bit against the uh, Reapers, I feel. So, it kind of creates a wall here. Get our probs into gas. Spam some buttons so people are like, What? How's the guy have like a billion ideas? It's so good. And then they make Reddit posts like, Is this guy hacking on? Is he so much I beat? I beat a hacker, guys. I beat him. I beat the sucker. You guys should tell me how good I am. No expansion. That doesn't bode well for us. There is an in base uh, barracks, so that's good. He has a buttload of gas. There is a good chance of proxy factory here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure it's not in our base. We're gonna go scout all around. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna put down that expansion. Come back up here. And we gotta get that uh, summer next cord. So we're gonna cut probes here for a second just to get this uh, summer next cord uh, down. There we go. You have not enough minerals. I don't know where he would be building this factory. But I mean, like, it's gotta be somewhere, right? Unless he's building an in base and he's just gonna drop it real quick. That might be a thing that he could do. Okay, I guess that's what he's doing. We're just gonna check down here and then we'll just, uh. Construct additional pylons. We'll be resolute that he is not doing proxy factory, so. That's good, I guess. Hey, guess who has no pylon and no pylon on the way? Garbage. Garbage, garbage player. So we're going to have to get stalkers out. Um, I think we're going to go start it here, and we're just going to start getting up some Phoenix. What was that that I just saw? Is that an SCV? 
Still no expansion, that's not a good sign. Some crazy all in stuff going on. Okay, so it's gonna be some kind of siege tank thing. Your probes are under attack. You have not so it's gonna be like a siege push, I think, uh, with. You have not enough minerals. I think it's gonna be siege tank with. Um, what am I trying to say? Siege tank and liberator, and then he's just gonna try like zone stuff out. So go ahead and get that set up a little bit. And it's gonna be Phoenix that are gonna save the day here. So we're gonna lift up things that we don't. Uh, we're gonna lift up stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. We're start getting some adepts to shade on top of the people that we want to shade on top of. I think we actually probably want to get like four stalkers. And then we're gonna chill on. Cold is the void. Actually, we're gonna send this up here to check this watchtower. We're gonna send him over here. Just scout when they're moving out. All the way. Okay, well, nope, 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 nope. Glory to the day long. We await. Okay. And neither a kind. By the heart. Oh god, I cannot lose that. Research complete. Alright, that's alright. We're just gonna build some backup pounds here. We're just gonna slow this place as much as we can. More racks down. And we really just need to make it so that the Marines can't dive up under this here. So that's what these are for. The first born shall persevere. We proceed. Direct. Okay, so we're just gonna hold position here. Like I said, it's all right. We're gonna let him uh, take out some of these pounds. Glory to the day And there we go. Easy as that. Engaging the enemy. For so that's good. That is so super good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start getting some tempests out. Cause I never play air, so I don't really know what the next step is from here. On the wings of justice. Time for battle. This is good so far. So we're just uh, keeping him in his base here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some more pylons up. Get some gates up here so we can keep reinforcing. Get some tempests up. Let your will be charged. Not enough energy. Give us your Oh boy, this guy will just not leave. I am eager to strike. Let your will be. All right, we'll add these to our hockey here, and Macro's kind of slipping. That's all right, though. That's how you handle that push. It's all patience, man. So one of the things that I see a lot of like platinum level players when I watch them stream, they really, really struggle with uh, with pushes like that. And that's because it's a really heavy power play from the Terran. So they're trying to push up and they're trying to do a lot of, they're trying to force you to make mistakes. So they're putting a lot of pressure on and they're parking outside your base and that's such an uncomfortable feeling knowing that 
they're setting up a station right out there and you feel like you have to get them out of there as quick as possible. But really, if you think about it, all it is, it's comprised of slow moving units. So Liberators can't just run in there. If you have those pylons set up like that, Liberator can't run in there because of overcharge. Um, he doesn't have a lot of Marines because he's spending a lot on tech. Uh, the Siege Tanks, also slow moving, have to unsiege, resiege. So he's going to slowly try to creep up into your base and get to a point, finally, where he can deal some damage. Uh, so right now, you can see I've got one Phoenix, two Stalkers, and two Adepts. If these were unsieged and he tried to just move up in there, Overcharge is going to wipe this out, no problem. So he's got to set up uh, a little ways back to make sure that I don't just like jump on top of that. So doing this uh, was kind of dumb because I wasn't paying attention to my mothership core like I should have been, and I really could I I could have lost that easily if he was a little bit more on top of it. So then he's moving forward, just trying to gain sight range. So you know that like his influence of power right now is like about to right here. You know he can cover this. You don't want to get in the siege tanks range. Obviously, it's going to absolutely destroy you. But if you set up another pylon like right here or right here, then it keeps creating more things that he has to stop, siege up, attack, stop, siege up, attack. Because he can't actually dive in. He doesn't have a lot of marines. That he can't. He can't really throw away any of these units. So he can't just jump on top of it and try to focus on a pylon real quick. Because the overcharge with the assistance of the adepts and uh, stalkers is going to completely end that. He also doesn't know about the Stargate play. So uh, I don't. Know, I don't know if he could have prepared for that better uh, another way. If he would have known. But the whole key to this is he's, if you look at income, right now I'm way ahead in harvesters. Uh, my mineral income is way higher. So I've really, I've got to just wait this out. I see a lot of platinum players at this point, they're just going to like jump on top and they go, oh no, I've already lost. And then, you know, I went, I expanded and he was going for this power play and there's no way I can win. So they try to like jump on top of it and I'll have like two stalkers trying to focus this and they'll just get completely owned. And then they're like, feels like Terran's overpowered. But you just got to play into the weaknesses of this, which is its immobility. So you just got to create roadblocks for them, so they got to move slowly across. You can see now he's creeping up a little bit further forward. I'm trying to keep my mothership core up here. The only reason I'm doing this is because uh, he doesn't have a lot to threaten the air. If I try to move in with my ground units to see what's going on, he's going to be able to kill him. I also could just use the shades from the adepts, uh, which probably would have been a better idea uh, to try to scout what his unit pathing is doing but I, for some reason I didn't even think of it um, here we go so I'm just moving here just to make sure that he's not getting too greedy and moving up too quickly because if I find out that his, his uh, siege tanks are in range of my pylons he's done he is gone so we go just keeping calm making sure we don't get supply block uh, keeping units back so he has to slowly crawl forward and here we go, and here's where here's kind of where the point, you don't want them to be able to attack your nexus, because that gets to be the point where your units are going to path all weird, you're kind of stuck in a choke and he's not, and um, it's just it's a bad position to be in if he starts fi actually getting to a point where he's hitting things that you care about. So this, is coming up here, is the moment where I have to kind of jump in. We've got the pylons set up here, so we kind of have a little concave that he's walking into, you see with these pylons, so I can overcharge uh, you know, two of these, three of these at a time. So he's, it's going to create a really restricted area. Really, his siege tank has to go like right here if he wants to be completely safe from pylons, and his marines can't assist. So that's the key here. Just keep it up, keep being a concave. You want to keep kind of like engaging and then moving back and keep expanding so that he keeps moving into a to a worse area until you find a good engagement and then you can attack him back. Here we go, you see him creeping forward. And this is a good time because it's, everything is unsieged. This is not sieged up, these are not sieged up. His marines are coming in to try to fight this. Um, I can even throw up an overcharge here. If uh, if these were finished, I could have overcharged and actually done a little bit of work on the marines. But at least with this overcharge, it, kind of, it still forces him to kind of stay back. He can't let the marines auto attack and move in too quickly. But here we go, just getting on top of them. Taking out the big expensive units first. He's using the siege tanks for cover, so get rid of those. go just by lifting him up it removes his heavy hitters from the fight it's the same as in pvp if you're going stargate and your opponent's going robo you use your phoenix to lift the immortals out of the fight and it completely negates the advantage that they're going for so by lifting up the siege tanks using the phoenix to attack the liberator if he wants to keep his liberator in uh in whatever they call it siege mode then he's then he's just going to lose his liberator because his marines have to be trying to defend the tanks from the, the ground units that are moving in. If he decides to go out of siege mode, then the ground units are just going to roll over him. So really, I mean, there's there's really no way for him to win this fight. And the fact that he's stuck on one base, he's trying to float over and take a second here. Um, but 
my economy's ahead, my tech's ahead. Well, I guess tech's about even, to be honest, but... Um, and I've also got a standing army that survives, so I've got a couple of tech units that are actually already surviving. So he tries to just, like, turtle up on this one base. He's gonna try to force my units to make a mistake. He's gonna try to set up a siege tank on the high ground to defend his natural. If you're sloppy with it, this will actually work, and I'll be forced to retreat when we'll go into a late-game situation, because the mules can actually make up for the economy difference. So I have to make sure that he does, isn't able to just move in to his new home here and, and uh, set up shop. So that's why we're trying to get in here before anything's set up. That's why I move in with a kind of fewer units than what I would normally do. Picking up the Marines makes it so that I guarantee that my ground forces are going to win this fight. And then the siege tank starts shelling away, so I come up here with the Phoenix and try to lift them out of the fight again. He pulls up his depots there, it's a good move. Stops my adepts from getting right on top, and I could have ended the game right there. But he delays them for a little bit. And I mean, honestly, from this point on, he plays it pretty well. He uses the SCVs to repair, calls down mules to do the mining, so his SCVs can be out there repairing. But there's just too much here for him to deal with. He's not able to produce. He's built up the production facilities because he was anticipating having a two-base economy, so now he's got money on uh, production facilities that aren't doing anything. And then from here, it's, it's pretty easy. Just trying to stop them from building this missile turret because then my Phoenix become way less effective. But the depots are down at this point, so it's, I mean, it's game over. So, thank you guys for joining me. I hope... Uh, if you're a struggling Protoss, struggling against this, and this helped out a little bit, I know I had trouble with it when I first did, and I know there's a lot of people that do. So thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.